Why don't we spend a few minutes on the on the Swiss API? Okay. I think we've had a few things around the API and the SDK. So everything I've shown you is basically um, is basically UI related. What we have in Orion is something called Swiss, um, which uh, stands for Solowings. I don't even know what the acronym is. Information service. Information service. Thank you. So that's a SOAP type API, and we're working on a REST version of the same, uh, on a REST type of access, but right now it's mostly SOAP. And basically what this table is, it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, overwhelming, but it's actually pretty simple. It shows you what ability the API provides in terms of reading, adding, modifying, of deleting, different kind of objects, node, interfaces, properties. You remember this custom properties that we saw before? Um, as well as the stats, obviously, per version of product. You have IPAM, UDT, NPM, NCM, and basically the intersection tells you if the API allows you to do this action on this action on this object or not, knowing that if the API doesn't provide the access, SQL can, I mean, we have an SQL database, so um, you can do it through SQL, but uh, that's what this table gives you to try to understand and remember all the detail. The point is we have a decent coverage in, multi, in the most important products for basically controlling and, and controlling basically the software from the outside. So the use cases for that are mostly customer either willing to extract statistics to display the statistics in a different portal, that's one use case. The most interesting ones are actually automation related where you have these people having an inventory system that they do whatever they want, usually it's a homegrown system or whatever. And a use case is, for example, I just don't want Orion to discover my network. Why would I want to do that? I already have a discovery that I trust, and I have my list of nodes already figured out in a different system. Just don't reinvent and rediscover the wheel, right? Let me tell you, Orion, what nodes I want you to manage. So we use this API to feed this information from an external source into Orion. They say, all right, you have your list of nodes, now go, manage them. That's one, that's one use case. Other people have an inventory system or a provisioning system that doesn't have a discovery. So what they do is they have their repository which is manually updated and they actually use Orion's discovery to discover automatically this, these objects. And basically they read them, they, gener they, ge sorry, they generate a list of what we have discovered and they correlate the two and that's a way to basically update easily their manual repository. They trust it other than the fact that it's manually updated. So with correlating this with Orion is a way to improve the quality of that repository with Orion. Those are a few use cases why people but, use this. But, the, but, but I would actually take it up a level above that. Is that this information service, although Orion is the largest consumer and, and producer of this data, it actually spans all, all it's, it's, it's um, being uh, included in, um, across our product line as a common interface. So it's not just a set of uh, interface services that provide JSON and uh, SOAP and a couple of other methods of interacting with it, but it's also the inter process communication services behind it. So things like remote pollers or distributed data or the way that two products talk to each other is all through this, uh, is all through Swiss and through the APIs behind this. So it's how we're able to more easily integrate products now than we used to. It started out as an easy way for uh, Orion to talk to external services, but now things like the website itself actually talks through Swiss to all of its back-end services. So um, although Orion started as a web app sitting on top of a SQL server, it's now an into your application like anything else. And so now anytime we have services that interact, we're using Swiss to do that. So it's, it's broken away from the need to understand the schema and the semantics of the particular data set, whether it's a file or database or whatever else. And so all of the processes are now using this language to speak to, speak to each other. So in terms of SDN, this also creates an easy integration point for us to talk to data that we already have, as well as be able to execute transactions and, and gather data from other systems. Is that well documented? Hmm? Yeah. Is it well documented? It's a, yeah, it's available, and it, we're not, we're not going to have time to show it uh, today, <coughs> but uh, if we're, if I'm, I'm going to be around later this afternoon or this evening, so if you guys want to see it, I'll show it to you. But it's well documented. It's out on Thwack. Just search uh, SDK, and you'll find it. Version 1.5, I think, is the latest yep. release. Yep. Do you guys have a demo of something you can do since we're getting thin on time? Do you have something you guys have put together with it? Uh, for the API? Yeah. 
you know, I can show you the, the Swickle editor. You want to do it now? I mean, it's, right. it's you know, actually connect to an Orion server and get data out of it. I mean, you can show us all the architecture pictures in the world, but an example of what you guys yeah. are actually doing with it could be and interesting. Be any question on this? I'm not going through it, but if anybody has a question on architecture, on, on what's on the screen, let's do it now, and then we move to the API SDK stuff. Any question on this? It's three levels of feder it's two levels of federation. We have additional polling engine for scalability and remotability of the collection point that aggregates into the Orion platform and the applications. And if you need one more level of consolidation, we have the enterprise operations console. That's all I would say. And, and I'll do this, I'll do this really quick, and then there's two other things that I gotta show you. But um, all right, so first one here. So this is the uh, Spickle Studio. In this case, I'm going to connect to a particular server. Um, this one's using the SOAP API. All right, so <coughs> what it just did was, and again, this is it's not exactly the uh, uh, SQL uh, workbench, but it's a this is one of s several tools, and this one's actually pretty polished. So what, I, what it did was it went out and looked at that. In this case, it's an Orion server. If it was a different product, it would look at a different catalog. And it's come back with all of the different objects that are available on there. Um, I can manually execute queries, but in this case, I'll actually show you some of the GORP of how it's working. So for in this case, let's say we wanted to go get a list of interfaces. Um, these are all of the elements that actually make up an interface, right? So these are effectively objects on that service interface. So I can say, let's generate a select statement. That's actually Swickle, which is um, a uh, SQL-like language, only we're not looking at tables anymore. These are now objects with properties. And then I'm going to execute that. And uh, yes, we don't have any more series. Well, that's actually okay. No, it's not right. Let me pick it up here. About my interface. I'll do that again. Okay, the Ryan group is much better. That's not very good query. You guys have any question while we're waiting on scalability? <laughs> Number of nodes? <laughs> Condense as well, but yeah. <laughs> stick to the questions. I can't see. There we go. All right. All right. So here's where I know. Sorry about that. Um, so there's all the node data. This is just a select query, and obviously this supports CRUD action. So and I could just have easily have made updates on that. And here's all the, the node detail data that maps to the node objects on the demo server that we were looking at before, right? I can just, um, if you want to go down to the layer of, of actually specifying um, things like the way that data is joined together or the select criteria, the rest of it, you can do that as a developer. But we're trying to keep that a little bit higher so that you're in fact just interacting with these objects. But um, the uh, it's using the same uh, methodology to speak, not just, let's say, the website to the Orion backend, but Orion talking to external services or, or remote services as well. But um, this is, we've, we really started implementing this, what, three years ago? We haven't really talked about it, but it's not just a cool little SDK to play with. This is actually a view into some of the plumbing and how we've been able to actually um, scale out the uh, infrastructure for um, a lot of these products.